Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from 1 Kings. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept him for this great steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O oh Lord my God, you have made your servant king in the place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has ever been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. 
The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three or four, three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The kingdom of heaven is like. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. The kingdom of heaven is like a fishing net. The kingdom of heaven is light. For a phrase that can only be found in Matthew's Gospel, it features pretty prominently. The phrase is used 32 times. The kingdom of heaven. Now there are two treasure parables sandwiched in the middle of today's Gospel that well illustrate the significance of this kingdom. A man finds treasure hidden in a field and sells all that he has in order to buy it. And a merchant who finds that one perfect pearl and sells everything to keep it. Whenever Jesus discusses treasure, he uses it as a metaphor for the goal, the direction of our lives, the prize that we seek, where our true heart's desire lies. It's earlier in Matthew's Gospel that we read the phrase, do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. It's also in Matthew that Jesus says to the rich young man, if you wish to be perfect, go, sell your possessions, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. Focus your attention on building the kingdom of heaven and you will receive your reward. Stay absorbed in the things of this world and you will generate only what you invest in. Treasure which moths and rust and time will inevitably take back from you. All of which can seem pretty daunting if you're not sure where to find this other kingdom. Added to which, Matthew presents the stakes as being high. For the past few weeks, we've had some kind of separation that follows each set of parables. This week, it's like the sorting of fish. One group ends up okay. One group are cast out. And there is always weeping and gnashing of teeth. So to provide some level of reassurance, let me first remind us that 
Our salvation is all the work of God. We do not earn our place in the kingdom. It is freely offered to us. It is the work and the passion of Jesus who has already earned us our place. We are invited. We are wanted even, but we never need to prove ourselves worthy. Our only work is to accept the invitation, to believe, to have faith in the one true living God. And it is through faith that we will start to see that this kingdom of heaven is not some distant post-mortem experience. It is all around us. Perhaps the best way to consider the kingdom of heaven is as a state of knowing rather than as a physical place. The parable of the buried treasure or the pearl of great value are not about winning some golden ticket, a guaranteed free pass to heaven when we die. The buried treasure is an attitude. It's about recognizing God, recognizing God's sovereignty, God's authority. It's about recognizing the alternative, the true, eternal reality. It is to look at this world with fresh eyes. Once you find that buried treasure, realize that the kingdom of heaven is all around us right now. Why would we work for perishable gains? Why would we look for status and wealth when we already have more than this world can ever give us. Who needs fame and riches when you realize that Almighty God, the creator of the universe, calls you by name, desires a personal relationship with you? With that knowledge, Focused securely in our minds, all the prestige and treasures this world can provide seem pretty lame, pretty fleeting and inconsequential. This true kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, is the only one worth working toward. Once we find that great pearl, once we grasp the imminence of the kingdom, we also realize that there is a lot more to come. That when we look at this broken, mistrusting, violent world with fresh eyes, the eyes of one who has found the pearl, found the hidden treasure, we will actively strive for that day when all can experience the kingdom this reality. We will work not to earn our place, but to show others their place. We will devote our lives to making the kingdom of heaven a reality for as many as we possibly can. Which is why I think Matthew has paired these treasure parables with the parable of the mustard seed and the leavened dough. The tiniest of seeds, the tiniest of seeds given time and the right attention will produce the greatest of shrubs. A dash of yeast carefully worked is enough to leaven a large batch of dough. In faith, a little goes a long way. A tiny spark, a humble beginning can yield a faith which can transform the world around us. You already have all of the faith that you need. But there's one more aspect to these treasure parables that we need to consider. Once the protagonists in these parables find the treasure, buried in a field or the greatest of pearls, they grab a tight hold of it 
and don't let go, willing to sacrifice everything they possess in order to keep it. In Matthew's gospel, there is no lukewarm believer. It is Matthew's gospel which reminds us no one can serve two masters. You cannot serve God and wealth. Jesus' admonition to hold on to the treasure is not about some kind of limited time offer. It's not because the kingdom is a scarce resource or that it is well hidden, so well hidden that you risk never finding it again. No. It is to be held on to you because if you take your eyes off the kingdom of heaven, if you stop looking up, your eyes will drift back down to earth, to the temptations of this world, to the cares and business of this kingdom. When we take our eyes off the prize, we veer off into the weeds. That is, sadly, our human nature. Faith is about staying fixated on God. Placing God at the heart of everything we do. Praying consistently, being faithful in worship, attending to the needs of the community, building up relationships. There is no half-hearted way to do that. And that tiny mustard seed, that spoonful of yeast, is all of the faith that you need. We either embrace our faith fully and live for the kingdom of heaven or we choose the ways of this world. No in-between, no halfway. We find the pearl and we're all in. We locate the hidden treasure and it becomes our singular focus. It is possible to live this way. It is possible to say no to the ways of this world. And it is a glorious way to live. The kingdom of heaven is like. The kingdom of heaven is like freedom. Amen. We believe in one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. 
We pray for all who govern and all who hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on Eula, Ron, Charity, Sally, Debbie, Damien, Gigi, Billy, Hunter, those who are lonely or alone, and all those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. <clears throat> we give thanks for all the blessings of this life. For Ginger Smith, Jonathan Bonagerus, Miracle Mahias, Elijah Clendenning, Bobby Nichols, James Smith, Becky Gosseran, Claire Murray, and Nicholas Porter, who celebrate their birthdays this week. And for Chad and Hel Kelly Hawkins, who celebrate their anniversary this week, that we may have joy in your service. Give to the departed, including Marjorie Fields, eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us now pray for our own needs and those of others. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. When peace like a river attends my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lord thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul
Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.